Hey guys, so this is going to be a, a vlog. Um, I wanted it to be part five of the binary cognitive mechanics, but it's not quite ready yet. Um, still processing a uh, a lot of it, so I'm just going to sort of introduce what we have here. It's actually a lot. Um, it's it's interesting. Um, it's something that hasn't really been discussed before. Something kind of new to um, typology, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. And uh, hopefully one day get like a the fifth part in the binary cognitive mechanics video. So this is about structurizations. Um, we'll, you'll see where it comes from. Okay. So first of all, the seven dimensions. So this is going to be interesting. So the cognitive, the cognitive functions are essentially three-dimensional, right? Two to the power of three is eight, right? Young inherited a two-dimensional space, thinking, feeling, sensing, intuition, right? Those are two dimensions, um, right? Two to the power of four is, uh, sorry, two to the power of two is four. Um, and added a third dimension of introversion and extroversion. That's how we got the three dimensions of the cognitive functions. But Jung also identified a fourth dimension of judgment versus perception, right? And so taking these four, four dimensions, we can extrapolate it and get the other three dimensions, right? Um, and so that's what I kind of did in binary cognitive mechanics. I got up to the five dimensions, right? So and so those, these are, those are four. Um, um, first of all, the thinking, feeling, intuition, and sensing those dimensions aren't fleshed out. Those are the results of a dimension. And so we fleshed out those dimensions. And so we'll just briefly go over what we did there. So we have the approaches, right? The thinking, feeling, intuition, and sensing. And then the dimensions underneath the approaches are explicit and implicit, intellectual and experiential. And I'll go into the combinatorics that sort of um, that sort of led us to get to here as well. And then the orientations, extroverted, introverted, Young gave us that one. And externalizing and internalizing, Young did not give us that one, but it's all over his writings. And I showed that in those videos. So these are four dimensions. Uh, so you can see one here, two there, right? Two here, two here. And then the other dimension is the judging axis and the perceiving axis, right? We call those evaluations and identifications. So that's five of the dimensions. Now, where did we get the other two from? Where did these other two pop out, right? This is going to be interesting. So... Again, we also discussed the mannerisms in the other video. I'm not going to go into it here, but when you combine these two dimensions together, you end up getting all the mannerisms in the quadra. Pretty interesting. So I was working with the Biocognition Think Tank a little bit. We're all together. Um, here's a few of the names. Uh, Loglin, Rook, Lau, Kev, jo Joako, Huako, how do you say your name? Tede, Mick, Assis. Um, so we'll have, we'll have a panel soon with a few of these people just to let you into our process and discuss uh, what's going on there. Excited to, to do that. Uh, we just have to schedule it because we're all different time zones. But uh, we perform we perform basically a combinatoric analysis and found that um, so there's 35 possible dimensions, um, and we do that through eight eight choose four right eight choose four ends up being 70 right 70 pairs so that's 35 dimensions 35 um, um, what's it called dichotomies right so out of these 35 possible dichotomies right there's a complete set of dimension must contain seven, right? And we'll show you why it must be seven. Um, and all of the others, 28, are, aren't are really um, valuable dimensions, although some of them are, and, and I don't want to throw them all out. I think they all contribute to like a major overall thing, but really the primary and core is the seven. And so uh, if we include the five previous dimensions, we can predict the final two dimensions of the cognitive functions, right? And we're, we're doing that through a few uh, analyses, and I'll show you that right now. Okay. So first of all, I linked a spreadsheet in the description if you want to see what we did. So first, just developing a binary language, right? Zero to 255. I cut off like this here, but it's all in the spreadsheet. So it goes down, and then it comes back up to 255. And you see here, the binary is all zeros. That's the null set. There's no functions in the null set. And here, it's all ones. That's 255. And it's all eight functions, right? And the everything set, right? And so you'll see here, one of these sets of four is a dimension, right? Because here you've got all of the extroverted functions. It's the it's the extroverted set. And here you've got the introverted set, right? And so this divides the cognitive functions into two, meaning it's a dimension, right? All of the twos that show up as well, there's about there's 28 of those pairing pairings, and they're also interesting and important things. Um and so we we discussed we discussed all 28, I guess, over time as well. So this this was the first step was just developing this language um, to, to see all all of the possible 35 dimensions, right? Now, um, there's a we did something called a cube analysis. Um, so here's the eight functions again, and here are all of the different pairings, right? All of these pairings have some kind of value and meaning to them. Um, um, and so we can take all of this mess of a diagram here. It doesn't look, look like a mess, it's actually nice, but we can take this diagram and ma map it onto 
cubes, right? And because cubes have eight um, points, right? The, there's the four on the top and the four on the bottom, and, and that's the eight points. We can make those the eight cognitive functions, and that's a full space. That's a full space, a spanning of a full space, right? And what happens is if you take pairs, there's 28 pairs. If you take um, if you take the pairs, like sets of uh, two, two, uh, four pairs, right? Four pairs, it's eight functions. So you take four pairs, that makes one cube. And then you can make seven cubes with that and you've gotten rid of all of the pairs, right? So here we've got seven cubes. So we'll show you what we did really quickly. This is not the most powerful analysis, but it's a nice one. So you need seven you need seven cubes to contain all of the pairings. So what did we do? This is just an example of a cube. So uh, N-E and S-E, this is a pairing. T-E-F-E, -E, that's a pairing. S-I-N-I, -I, right? And T-I-F-I, -I, that's a pairing, right? So these are this is one cube with this pa these pairings, right? Um, and so you see on the surfaces, you get the dimensions, extroverted, externalizing, introverted, and internalizing, right? Um, which is the orientations, right? So the orientations pop out of this cube analysis just by taking certain pairs, right? And you see the S-E-N-E -E shows up here. It's the O-E, right? The T-E-F-E -E shows up here. It's the D-E, right? So, so the, the cube analysis gives us these dimensions back as well. And there's actually a hidden dimension here as well. Um, the identification and evaluation dimension, right? You see that that's also divided here, the uh, the uh, judging and perceiving axis. And what happens is if you just swap two of these pairs around, so you put the N, E, S, E over here, you end up with, with um, yeah, the, all of the identif all of the perception functions here, and you end up with all of the judging functions here. And so you see this with the analysis, this is also in the spreadsheet, that these are sort of like the hidden the hidden sides of the cube that don't really show up, but they're also there. They're all just e they're equally as valid in this cube. They exist in this cube, right? <clears throat> okay, so then we go to cube two. We end up with the approaches. They pop right out: explicit, intellectual, implicit, experiential. And what are we doing here with these pairs? It's the pairs that make up sensing, right? Let's go back here to our pairs. So you know, sensing is a pair. These are the pairs. All of these colors here, right? And the other one we had was F E and T E together, S E and N E together. It's these pairs that we put together, right? So, so then cube three, that's cube two. Now cube three, I blocked out the names here. They're on the spreadsheet. Um, but this one, you end up with the axes, right? N-E-S-I, F-E-T-I, right? These are the function axes. You make those the, 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 the edges of the cube um, and you get back the surfaces of, you still get the perception axis, uh, the perception functions and the perception set and the evaluation set, the judgment set. Um, but you get these sets. So here you see, this is alpha quadra functions, beta quadra function, gamma, delta quadra. That's interesting. Now, the other four cubes are just using the mannerisms. There's the 16 pairs of mannerisms. Uh, the other four cubes have all of these same dimensions on them. Uh, no extra dimensions. It's just these exact same dimensions. Just you're not going to end up with the identification and evaluation dimensions. Those don't show up. But you'll end up with, but here you end up with the quadra dimensions. And so the other cubes have all of those different dimensions in them. Um, but this is, was the interesting thing. Okay. This pops out as core dimensions, these, these quadra, right? So you have, you have, okay. So, okay. <laughs> this is the first place it popped out. The next thing we did was, um, what's called a Steiner system. So there's a video in the description, um, that describes what Steiner systems are. And they actually do this exact Steiner system in that video, which is kind of cool. So the, so the Steiner sh system shows the distance relationship between sets of information. So what we have here is literally sets of information, different sets of cognitive functions. And then we know how far away they are from each other, um, based on the Steiner set. And so the Steiner set, what we just, we, what we wanted to do was three for the number of dimensions, right? Um, um, so that we know you need three cognitive functions to make up a, a complete space, right? Four is the definition of a dimension, right? Because you divide it by four, you get in half. And then eight um, is the number of elements in, in everything. It's the eight cognitive functions, right? And so we designed the Steiner system purposefully to give us these dimensionalities, right? And so what pops out from that? So here, this is the exact, it's ended up being exactly from the video. And you see like this is the opposite of this. The green is the opposite of the green, right? So really we end up with the seven dimensions, right? Seven, right? This dimension is opposite than that dimension. And we put them out, like spits right back out exactly this, um, extroverted, extroverted, introverted, identification, evaluation. These are the dimensions. And then again, we have these dimensions, right? So what do we have here? We've got um, alpha, right? Alpha quadra. And then here's going to be gamma, right? Here's going to be beta and then delta, right? So these are these sets show up, right? And so what does this mean? What are these dimensions, right? 
So what the Steiner system actually says that if you take any set of three cognitive functions that you can only fit them into a single dimension, it doesn't matter. Take any three cognitive functions at random, you automatically know what the fourth dimension, what the fourth function has to be because, because it can only fit in one of these dimensions, right? So that's the, all of the dimensions are a distance two away from each other, right? It means every dimension, you must swap at least two cognitive functions in that dimension, right? I have to swap two in any of these dimensions in order to get to another dimension, right? Have to swap two. So here's an example. This is not a valid dimension, right? T-E-T-I-S-E-N-E. -E -E. This is not actually one of these. Uh, it's one of these other 28 dimensions, not one of the seven. But you'll see that if I took any three of these elements, I will know which dimension I'm in, right? And so let's get rid of T-E. We have T-I-S-E-N-E. -E. Right. And it's actually, this is the internalizing dimension. And the one that's missing is FI, right? Same thing. Um, the one that's missing here is FE. If we get rid of the TI, right? This, and it becomes the, all of the extroverted, right? T E S E N E F E, right? Let's cross this one out, right? So this is exactly what the Steiner system is saying is you, all you need is three functions to represent a, a dimension, right? And the fourth one is a given one, right? And so that's the distance. And so let's see what we get here. So Okay, so the last two dimensions, so we have these dimensions, and the last two dimensions ends up looking like this, right? You've got the, the same way you've got play here, the same way you've got ST here, you've got the alpha quadrant here. What does the alpha quadrant mean? It means the joining of SI, NE, TI, and FE, all these functions come together in the alpha quadrant, right? But there's a dimension behind this, right, that produces this. And the question is, what is this dimension, right? So here... We can do the same thing here, right? You've got NE and SE here, uh, FE and TE here. So what's the dimension that produces this, right? It's extroverted, right? There's, uh, this extroverted dimension comes towards all of the functions and, and gives them a definition, gives them a dimension, right? And then the introverted side gives them another definition, right? So 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 here we've got the same thing. Something here happens. And and the question is, what is it, right? What's the common commonality? And we're call, I'm calling it now structurizations. I think the other, we had another name um, for it um, that Joaco liked more. I'm trying to think what it was. Here, he's got it right, I've got it right here. Uh, give me one second. Uh, he likes collaborations better. All right, so collaborations, structurizations, um, something like that, right? This is why this is in the vlog and it's not actually a, a full video because all of the names aren't fleshed out yet and the concepts aren't completely fleshed out yet. But what we were seeing was that there's some kind of um, way that information is getting structured, some kind of way it's getting structured. And this is the way it gets structured. It gets structured based on these dimensions. This is like the the type of structure it has. Okay. And so we, we hear the, oh, we skipped ahead. Oh yeah. Okay, fine. So here are the names we gave them. So all of these functions are formulating. All of these functions are synergizing. That's the kind of structure they're getting. All of these functions here are generalizing this kind of structure. And all of these functions are combining, right? And you could look them up in the dictionary. It's pretty one-to-one -one what we're talking about here. We haven't re really explored yet do, uh, keeping things consistent because you see everything. We have uh, I and E dichotomies here. So how would we fit this into an I and E dichotomy? We haven't thought about that yet, but uh, put the names aside, just kind of giving over the concept. So you'll see um, all of these functions here, right? Are formulating. So this kind of unites everything together. If I was to map on formulating here, uh, synergizing here, right, generalizing here, and combining here, this would be the full map of all of the seven dimensions going on here. And what's I'll talk about at the end um, how you only really need three of them to describe the functions, but every function, every individual function is going to have seven dimensions within it. And we'll get there at some point. Um, so what we have here is this is the umbrella for the alpha quadra, right? The alpha quadra functions are all formulating, right? But the, the observer axis, the perceptions, right? The identifications are combining. These are combining and these are synergizing, right? So we have alpha quadra is formulating overall. That's the umbrella. They're all formulating, but they're combining identifications and synergizing evaluations, right? And so if you want to look also at for example, what is what is a good definition of any? Well, any is formulating and combining, right? That's what it's doing. Or what is a good definition of FI? Well, it's generalizing and combining, right? Um, and so that's kind of the idea. There's like a, a structural makeup, a structural foundation behind the functions. And this is where the structure comes from, these two new dimensions, right? Um, now here, just 
uh, took straight definitions from the, the internet. They're not that great. Um, here I said non-contextual definitions. So they're not, they're, these de definitions have to be applied to this context, but in general, I think the words kind of work. So formulating, um, create, devise, uh, devise methodically, uh, strategy or, or proposal, um, economists and statisticians were needed to help formulate economic policy, right? So formulating things like this, um, uh, express an idea in a concise or systematic way, right? SI is doing that, NE is doing that, um, TI is doing that, FE is doing that. So it, it, it's very applicable. And all of these kind of also work as well. Uh, synergizing is um, um, interact or cooperate with one or more agents to produce a joint effect greater than the sum of the effects achieved separately, right? Synergizing. Um, and I guess all functions are doing that to some degree when they work together, but the, these are also um, independently doing the synergizing. So NI is synergizing, right? TI is synergizing, right? And that means TE isn't synergizing. That means FI isn't synergizing, right? Um, um, okay, uh, generalizing, make general or broad. This is a little less uh, applicable to what gamma is actually doing. But if you look at gamma, what the opposite it is formulating, it's op it's not formulating, it's generalizing. It's making something more widespread or widely applicable, um, inferring from specific cases, like taking all the specific cases, right? SE is doing that as well, taking all the specific cases and making this broad general statement. That's what NI is doing, right? So it's very applicable to the structure of SE and I and also TI, T uh, TE, FI, right? And then combining, uh, joining or merging of different parts or qualities in which the component elements are individually distinct, right? It keeps the individual components distinct, but it combines them um, it merges them, right? And still keeps them distinct. And that's exactly what NE is doing. That is exactly what SI is doing. That is exactly what TE and FI are doing as well. They're combining. So um, so here we have the, the seven dimensions. Now, here's what, what I want to talk about. This is the last slide. So just, okay, think about any function, what dimension. So like, let's say I wanted to talk about um, FI, right? FI, well, I can say it's generalizing. That's one of the dimensions. Okay, it's generalizing. It's It's internalizing. Okay, so uh, right away I'm saying, okay, generalizing and internalizing, what what can that be? I only gave two dimensions. So generalizing means it could be any of these four functions, right? F-I-T-E, N-I-S-E. So right away you have F-I and S-E are both generalizing and internalizing. So you need to differentiate, is it S-E or is it F-I? So you could say, okay, it's an F-I is a, 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 a judging function, so that you've differentiated. Or you could say F-I is implicit, right? Because like you just add one more dimension from here. So, so you could take... Any three of these dimensions, which is what Young did, Young took three dimensions to get to the cognitive functions, but you can, but he, you don't need to take those dimensions, right? There are seven actual dimensions you can use, and you can take any three of them. And it's also saying that any single cognitive function has all seven dimensions in it, right? That's that's what that's what the function has. And so, if you wanted a, an accurate description, what SI is, for example, well, your SI is formulating, it's combining, it's uh, externalizing, it's introverted, it's experiential, and it's explicit. And the last dimension is it's a perception function, right? And so those seven dimensions is what gives SI all of its different qualities. Um, so, so yeah, that's the the gist of it. I wanted to present that here, and hopefully we'll get the um, the next step is going to be to get some of the members of the think tank just to introduce themselves and show you who we're who we're working with, and um, yeah, eventually get this as part of the binary cognitive mechanics series that there's four videos there now. I recommend you watch them. I, I'm I'm quite proud of the work we've done and I think I stand behind it. I think it's all 100% accurate at this moment. So um, yeah, have a good one and thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, look forward to more and discussing this stuff with you guys, um, seeing some feedback before I actually make it into a video. All right, have a good one.